and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life 
Good morning. Good morning. morning. And dear family and friends, as we indeed pray that our men to be ordained deacons be given the heart of a shepherd, it is good to welcome you. I'm Father Alfredo Hernandez, rector of St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary. We're so glad that you have been able to come and be with us for this wonderful occasion. It is a great joy that we are here to celebrate the ordination of 10 men to the diaconate, and that so many of you are here to be with your loved ones and friends. It is good to have our own local ordinary, Bishop Gerald Barbarito of the Diocese of Palm Beach, celebrating the ordination mass. We also welcome Bishop Eric Pohlmeyer of the Diocese of St. Augustine, who's here for the ordination, in particular for one of his seminarians, Charles Bemis. Bishop Joseph Coffey, Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of the Military Services, is here to support Jake McGuinn, co-sponsored by the Diocese of Venice and the Military Archdiocese. And the fourth bishop celebrating will be Bishop Silvio Jose Baez, exiled auxiliary bishop of Managua and a professor and spiritual director at the seminary. Bienvenidos, amigos y amigas de nuestros hermanos que serán ordenados como diáconos hoy. Como rector del Seminario Regional San Vicente de Paul, me da mucha alegría recibirlos. Tenemos un fotógrafo, pro, fotógrafo por profesional Así que les pedimos que no salgan de sus bancos a tomar fotos. Si quieren tomar fotos de sus puestos, no hay problema, pero por favor no usen flash. Please follow the guidance of the ushers during Mass. We do have a professional photographer, so please don't leave your places to take pictures during Mass. And if you are taking pictures from your places, please do not use flash. have a couple of other welcomes first. It is good to be able to have Jude Okeke's family joining us via live stream from Nigeria. Welcome to all of you. And to the family of Jakub Beretza. Serdecznie witam rodni Rosine, Rosine, Jacoba Beris, Berezzi, Mame Maria, Veronica, e Davida, e Brata Franca, e Katekish, Katekishtof. Jak dobše še tu jestecie. That was an attempt at Polish. <laughs> Do note that because it is the Easter season, no one kneels during the Litany of Saints. The candidates will lie prostrate at that time. And when it comes time for communion, please be aware uh, that receiving communion in the Catholic Church is an act of faith in the presence of Christ and an expression of unity with the Church. We welcome all to share in our celebration today but those who are not able to receive communion, non-Catholics, Catholics who know they are not prepared for Holy Communion, and children who haven't made their first communion may remain in prayer in their places at that time or come forward and ask for a blessing crossing your arms in front of you. All are welcome for a reception of the parish center after mass. There's a lot of food there. <laughs> and in just a few minutes, this beautiful liturgy will begin. I would invite you to spend the remaining moments in prayer for the men about to be ordained.
Good morning. A warm welcome to all of you to St. Joan of Arc Parish and to the Diocese of Palm Beach for this very joyful day in which we will ordain 10 men to the diaconate. It's a joy to be with all of you from different parts of Florida, and we ask God's blessings upon you and upon your family on this happy occasion. A special privilege to welcome my brother bishops, Bishop Baez from the seminary, as well as Bishop Coffey from the Military Ordinariate, and Bishop um, Bishop Eric from the Diocese of St. Augustine, and Bishop Eric Holtmeyer. We're welcome, we're privileged to have them with us today for this celebration. As we begin, we give thanks to God for the faith that we share, and we ask God's blessings upon these men who will be our deacons, that they will continue to share that faith and to bring joy and peace to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred heart. to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thought and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, Select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert, convert to, Judaism. to Judaism. They presented, they presented these men, men to the apostles, the apostles who prayed and laid, and laid hands, hands on them. On them. The, word the word of God, God continued, continued to, spread, to spread, and the number, and the number of, the of the disciples in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem increased, increased greatly. greatly. Even a Even large, large group, group of, priests of priests were becoming, becoming obedient, obedient to the faith. To the faith. The word, the of, word the of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, God, 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 God,
Lectura, Lectura de, la de la segunda carta, segunda carta de, San de San Pablo a los Corintios. A los Corintios. Hermanos, Hermanos, puesto que, puesto que por, la por la misericordia de Dios, de Dios estamos, estamos encargados, encargados del, ministerio del ministerio de la predicación, de la predicación. No, no solo no solo desfallecemos, no sino, que sino que renunciamos a actuar, a actuar en forma, forma oculta, oculta o vergonzosa, o vergonzosa a, proceder a proceder con astucia, con astucia o, a falsear o a falsear el mensaje, el mensaje de Dios. De Dios. Solamente, Solamente predicamos la verdad. la verdad. Y en esto, y en consiste, esto consiste nuestra, nuestra recomendación, recomendación ante el juicio, ante el juicio que, hagan que hagan de nosotros, nosotros en, la en la presencia de Dios, de Dios todos, todos los hombres. Los hombres. Porque, no Porque no nos predicamos a nosotros mismos, nosotros mismos sino a Jesucristo, sino a Jesucristo el, Señor, el Señor, y nos presentamos, y nos presentamos como, como servidores de ustedes, de ustedes por, Jesús. por Jesús. Pues el mismo Dios que dijo, «Brille la luz en medio de las tinieblas», es el que ha hecho brillar su luz en nuestros corazones para dar a conocer el resplandor de la gloria de Dios que se manifiesta en el rostro de Cristo. Pero llevamos este tesoro en vasijas de barro para que se vea que esta fuerza tan extraordinaria proviene de Dios y no de nosotros mismos. Palabra de Dios. to bring tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. According to John, glory, glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, So I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you 
and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let those who are to be ordained deacons come forward. From the Archdiocese of Miami, Yacoub Beresa. From the Diocese of St. Augustine, Charles Ashley Bemis. From the Diocese of Orlando, John Tyler Triolo. <coughs> William Edward Burns. <coughs> From the Diocese of Pensacola, Tallahassee, William David Gibson. Peter Mark Jutris. Grant William Sennett. From the Diocese of Palm Beach, Jude Ogochuku Okeke. From the Diocese of Venice in Florida, Jacob Christian. Gwyn, William Patrick Long, Most Reverend Father, 
Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Again, a warm welcome to all of you from all around Florida and elsewhere to this very happy day. Again, to my brother bishops, brother priests and deacons, seminarians, all those from the seminary who join us on this happy occasion. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad. This refrain of Psalm 118 repeated frequently just last week during the octave of Easter is certainly a most appropriate today. Today indeed is a day of the Lord for these 10 men who are about to be ordained as deacons. We rejoice, we rejoice, and we are glad in it. As these men, your sons, brothers, family members and friends continue their preparation for priestly ordination we give thanks first and foremost to the Lord for calling them to this ministry of service for all of us. We also give thanks to them, to each of them, for discerning and accepting the call as well as to all of you, their family members and friends, in supporting them in their discernment. We finally give thanks to the seminary of St. Vincent de Paul with its rector, Father Alfredo Hernandez, and all of its dedicated faculty and staff for the outstanding service to the Church of Priestly Formations which they have afforded to these fine candidates. My dear brothers, soon to be ordained as deacons, this is a most significant day for you. After many years of prayer and preparation, you will receive the sacrament of holy orders. And as holy orders implies, order your lives to Christ and service to his church as part of your preparation for priesthood. Holy orders is the ordering of our life towards Christ. In your ordering of your lives more closely to the person of Jesus Christ today, you will make before all of us three significant promises to him and to his church which will intimately affect your entire lives. These promises are a lifelong commitment of celibacy, a lifelong commitment of prayer as expressed in your promise to pray the liturgy of the hours, and a commitment to the service of the church as expressed in obedience. While these are a trinity of separate promises, they form a unity in the ordering, the ordering of your lives to Christ and to his church. All of them become one in handing over yourselves to the Lord completely and totally today. In the first promise of celibacy, you promise to espouse yourself to Jesus Christ in his service to the church. Celibacy offers you the freedom, the freedom to focus your total attention on the needs of the people that you are called to serve. However, 
Celibacy is not simply a function to provide you freedom for service. It is a state of life through which you are able to enter into a more deep union with Christ. That union with Christ must be the total focus of your lives. As you grow more deeply in a more mystical union with Christ, you are more compelled, more compelled to give yourselves in service to others in imitation of him who came to serve and not to be served. Celibacy is indeed a great gift, a great gift for the church and for each of you. As you commit yourselves to live this gift, always recall the words we just heard in today's gospel from St. John, in which Jesus tells his apostles, it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. Again, Jesus tells his apostles, I have called you friends, friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. Jesus calls his apostles into a union of real friendship, an intimate union of real friendship with him. Your union with Christ grows through your commitment to giving yourself exclusively to him in celibacy. Your promise of celibacy is enhanced by your promise of prayer. Since celibacy will afford you a more mystical union with Christ, that union can only be nurtured through prayer. As a deacon, you will have a special relationship with the word of God through the proclamation of the gospel. Through your reading and meditating on the scriptures, you will grow in union with God as his word becomes more and more a part of your hearts. The exhortation given to you today as you receive the gospel book must be the center of your diaxonal ministry. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heralds you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. The liturgy of the hours revolves around the word of God, both in the praying of the Psalms and the readings from the scriptures. As you make your commitment to celebrate, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours today for the people of God and indeed for the whole world, always remember that the promise is part of a deeper promise to maintain the spirit of prayer in all that you do which is proper to your way of life. Again, recall that the Lord has chosen you and your response to him is always deepened, deepened by prayer. Pope Francis insightfully reflected in the Stations of the Cross he prepared for Good Friday this year. Prayer is not about lips that move, but a heart that listens. Prayer is not about lips that move, but a heart that listens. Finally, today you make a promise of obedience to place yourselves at the service of the church so that your future decisions and how you will carry out your ministry are not entirely your own. The church will carefully listen to you and discern especially where your ministry will be most effective. The promise of obedience to your bishop is more than doing simply what is asked of you. The root meaning of obedience means to listen to. Obedience means to listen to. Listening to the church means carefully hearing what it says and accepting it in a cooperative spirit. Your listening will be most effective when it is rooted in prayer and openness to God's will and God's word. It is also most effective when it reflects your commitment to giving yourselves completely in freedom to Christ in celibacy. As Pope Francis insightfully said to the priests of Rome in his chrism mass, this, in his chrism mass at this year in his homily, let's stop looking at our lives in terms of efficiency and immediate results. Let's do this by looking for the eternal goal to which we are called, the ultimate purpose of our lives. 
the ultimate purpose of the lives of those you will serve. And what the Pope said about prayer can also be said about obedience on a different level. It is not about lips that move, but a heart, a heart that listens. You are well aware of the misunderstandings of the church's position today, the challenges that come to it, as well as opposition to many of its teaching. This is very evident in the reaction to the document, beautiful document we received this week, Dignitas Infinita, released by the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith. It articulates very well the teaching of the church today on significant moral issues, but as we have all seen in the reaction to it, not to the agreement of all. We do not live, we do not choose to live in the times in which we live, but we choose the manner, we choose the manner in which we will live in them. Certainly the church has faced more difficult times than it does today, but this does, make, does not make our commitment to living our ministry with courage and commitment any less heroic. The promises that you make today are heroic. They're promises which are heroic at any time. You will be called upon to live them in an even more heroic manner today. Always remember what the Lord has said to you today, to all of us in the Gospels. It is he who has chosen you and he will never relent. The Lord will never relent in his promise of faithfulness to you. Be always faithful to him. This is indeed the day the Lord has made and we all rejoice and are glad in it. My brothers, now to be ordained as deacons, your commitment of faith, we are grateful and we thank you for it. And we thank you for your accepting the call from the Lord to be his ministers. Through your diaconal ministry in preparation for priesthood, you will make the presence of Christ a reality for many people whom you will serve. May the love of truth the constant thirst for God be your incentive to seek tirelessly an ever more intimate union with Christ, especially the Trinity, the Trinity of the promises you make today. The Lord's words of promise in the gospel are to you today. As you promise the Lord in these three promises your life, he promises you as well. I tell you all of this so that my joy may be yours, and your joy may be complete. I tell you all of this, so my joy may be yours, and your joy may be complete. Christ promises us joy if we are faithful to him. Through your faithfulness, but most importantly, through the Lord's faithfulness, you will know that joy. The Lord, who begins his good work in you today, will always, always, bring it to fulfillment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. My brothers, before you proceed to the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. And so I ask you in the name of the church, do you resolve to be consecrated for the ministry of the church to the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge with humble charity the office of the diaconate, so as to assist the priestly order and be benefits of to the Christian people. I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle says, and to promise this faith by word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? 
Do you resolve to keep, are you, those of, do you resolve to keep the promise of celibacy as a sign of the dedication of your life to Christ and the church for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in service to God and to others? Do you resolve to guard and increase the spirit of prayer proper to your way of life in keeping with the spirit of the circumstances of your life to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with the people of God and indeed for the whole world? I do. Do you resolve to conform your manner of life always to the example of Christ whose body and blood you will handle at the altar. I do with the help of God. Thank you. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. <clears throat> do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise obedience and respect to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. <coughs> do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. <clears throat> do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, continue to bring it to fulfillment.
Let us pray, dearly beloved, that God, the Almighty Father, will in his mercy pour out the grace of blessings on these his servants, whom he is pleased to receive into the sacred order of the diaconate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, Pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us, Saint John Vianney. Pray for us, Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us, Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us, Saint Vincent de Paul. Pray for us. Saint John Henry Newman, pray for us. Saint Patrick, pray for us. Saint Andre Besset, pray for us. Saint Joseph Cupertino, pray for us. Saint Margaret Mary, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Saint John the Twenty Third, pray for us. Saint Anthony of Padua, pray for us. Saint Therese of Lisieux, pray for us. Saint Timothy, pray for us. Blessed Maria and Luigi Beltrame Quattrocchi, pray for us. Blessed Francis Xavier Silos. Pray for us, Saint Philip Neri. Pray for us, Saint Charles Borromeo. Pray for us, Saint Cecilia. Pray for us, Saint Maximilian Kolbe. Pray for us, Saint Anastasia. Pray for us. Holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin. 
Consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and kindly accompany with your help what we are about to do by virtue of our office. Sanctify with your blessing those whom in our judgment we believe are worthy to be offered for the exercise of sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh! 
for winds, O Spirit, come, earth of God, disperse the shadows of us, renew and strengthen your people. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office. While remaining unchanged, you make all things new and settling all things in order with everlasting providence. You make due provision for every age. Through your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. You grant that your church's body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of our members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. As once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve your name. Thus, in the first days of your church, your son's apostles, led by the Holy Spirit, appointed seven men of good repute to help them in the daily ministry so that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. Look favorably also on these your servants, we pray, O Lord, whom we humbly dedicate to serve at your holy altars in the office of the diaconate. Send forth the Holy Spirit upon them, O Lord, we pray, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May every evangelical virtue abound in them, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your precepts shine forth in their conduct that by the example of their manner of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. And offering the witness of a good conscience, may they remain firm and steadfast in Christ, so that imitating your Son on earth, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. <clears throat> Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
Receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Be with you. In spirit. Congratulations. Peace be with you. In your spirit. Congratulations. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congratulations. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Congratulations. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congratulations. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Peace be with you, Jew. Congratulations. God bless you. Oh, no.
the same God who said, from the darkness let the light shine. It is he who shone into our hearts to make radiant the knowledge of his glory, which is on the face of Christ, which is on the face of Christ. But we carry this treasure in earthen vessels. But we carry this treasure in earthen vessels. So that it may be manifest that the sublimity of this love comes from God, comes from God and not from us. So that it may be manifest that the sublimity of this love comes from God, comes from God and not from us. Afflicted on every side but not crushed, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, carrying always in our body the dying of Jesus, so that in us may be manifest his resurrection. Bearing always in our body the dying of Jesus, so that in us may be manifest his resurrection. That when we die, you receive life. So that when we die, you receive life. Caring always in our body, the dying of Jesus. When we die, you receive life. So that when we die, you receive life. Caring always in our body, the dying of Jesus.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good law of his holy church. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet, and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblation of our service, and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous desire, we're pleased to decree the many ministries he be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, united governor throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, and all those who are holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, his spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Protagonist, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, all your saints, 
We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servants whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts given to them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, the servants who have gone before us with sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant then, O Lord, we pray, and always live in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. Through Christ our Lord.
to us also your servants to those sinners. Open your abundant mercies. Grace as he grants some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. Through John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Precepti salutaribus nostri et divine institutioni formati audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat Quesimus Domine, aramnimus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, erope misericordiae tue adiuti, er a peccato simo semper liberi, er an omnibus perturbatione securi, expectantes beantem spen, er adventum salvatore nostri Jesu Christi. Quia tuum es regnum et potestas in gloria in secula. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace with each other. Peace, 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 peace with you, John. Great to be with you. Peace be with you, Great to be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Congratulations again. Peace be with you again. Peace out, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Great to be with you. Mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. of God, you Yeah. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Receive. 
Oh. Uh-huh.